Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Greg Michalowski. I'm the Chief Currency Analyst for FXDD. And this is a special uh, webinar that I give uh, on a monthly basis uh, for the, my friends at FX Street. Today's day is November 20th, 2012. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about trading the Forex, Forex market in, in an uncertain environment. Uh, the, my email address uh, is greg at fxdd.com. If you'd want these slides, you can always uh, send them. Uh, send me an email. I'll be happy to send them to you. Uh, my Twitter is greg mike fx. My uh, I'm giving a daily live squawk now at www.livestream.com forward slash fxdd, and also uh, you can find some web web blog commentary each day during the New York session at www.fxddnow.com. Before we get started, uh, let me remind everybody that um, foreign exchange trading carries a high level of risk that may not be suitable for all investors. Leverage creates additional risks and loss exposure. And before you decide to trade foreign exchange, um, be sure to carefully consider your investment objectives, experience level, and risk tolerance. You have the potential to lose all or part of your risk capital, so be sure that you are comfortable with that before you start trading. Now, during this webinar, uh, I'm not here to give any buy, sell, or hold recommendations. I do talk a lot about uh, defining risk and limiting risk, and I think that's one of the most important things for you as a foreign exchange trader to be able to do, and by do or one of the things that you need to do. And by doing that, uh, you're able to stay in the game, game um, uh, and potentially uh, participate in uh, certain types of uh, trends or trends that may occur from time to time. But today's topic is uh, is about um, maybe a little lack of trends. In fact, in 2012, the year can be characterized as a historically quiet year. And this, this, uh, if, this is in spite of um, what we probably thought would be a pretty exciting year uh, when we, we, were, we were anticipating 2012 at around this time last year. Had a lot going on as far as um, Europe goes, had a lot uh, going on to look forward to for uh, the year uh, in the United States with an election, election year uh, coming up uh, and also uncertainty about the overall growth in the United States. We knew that the other countries, you know, like uh, Japan, um, uh, their currency was, um, was being a safe haven currency. The Swiss franc was also a safe haven currency. We knew the Aussie and the and the you know some of the other currency pairs were uh, performing uh, better, likely to perform better. But overall, from a historical perspective, this is a quiet year. And I have some charts here to illustrate that. Let's take a look at the euro versus U.S. dollar. If you took the low to high trading range from this year. What do we have? We have about 1,445 pips from the low to high trading range. Well, how does that compare historically going back to the start of the euro's existence? And the euro started in uh, 1999, and there was only one year, September, uh, 2001, the year that uh, we had the September 11 attack, attacks in New York, and you know, basically the markets got really quiet at that time. Stock markets were closed. The, you know, pe people were, New York was rebuilding at that time. And so, so this is the quietest year um, since the uh, year in 2001. Now, you know, and, and even on a relative basis, you know, the, if you were to put a, a mean in here, you know, or an average or something like that, it would be somewhere around 2,300 pips. We're, we're a long way away from that with uh, this year's trading range. Take a look at the dollar index. Um, if you if you took a look at that basket of currencies, the range for this year is only 600 pips, or six point. You know, this is in hundreds of uh, pips. Pips here. That is the lowest trading range on record, uh, going back to at least 1999 here. So uh, the dollar index also showing non-trending. Take a look at the uh, dollar index for 2012, just on a, on a chart here. And we had um, a trend to the downside and then a sideways trend, a trend to the upside and sideways, and then a trend to the downside and sideways. And we're right around the midpoint of the 2012 trading range right now. We're right in the middle. The market doesn't know what it wants to do. This is an uncertain environment, and an uncertain environment 
um, has been a theme that I feel has contributed to the Forex market's uh, malaise, if you will, for, for the uh, year, year without a true trend. So what has uh, caused this uncertainty uh, in the market? What has caused this uncertain environment? And I think uh, I've listed uh, seven, maybe seven and a half here. Uh, there are probably others. This isn't necessarily the end-all, be-all. Why, why the market is such an, in an uncertain environment and a non-trending type environment. And uh, the first is a regulatory environment has gotten much more stricter, so less trading going on um, really around the, around the globe. EU drama, lots of EU drama, Greece, Italy, uh, you know, Spain, which one is going to be uh, next? Distrust in the U.S. economic recovery. Um, although the U.S. has uh, seen employment growth throughout the entire year, that employment growth hasn't necessarily been all that strong. Why? There's you know, regulatory environment, there's EU drama, there's uh, you know, these other things here, election year, the U.S. fiscal cliff, that's what we're dealing with now. Continuation of the central bank's non-traditional activity, we've... we've we, we now have the Bank of Japan talking about uh, or the potential that the Bank of Japan will come in and do some more um, strong buying of, uh, of, of debt instruments like mortgage, mortgage backs like the, like the U.S. has been uh, doing with their QE3. Uh, near unanimous desire for all countries to have a weak currency to spur on growth. What country doesn't want a weak currency? The Australian, or, or the Reserve Bank of Australia even cut rates this year, um, and uh, that was one of the stronger countries. Those are the ones that you can count on as perhaps being a stronger currency. They cut rates this year. The U.S. Um, uh, has thrown all everything but the kitchen sink at the uh, recovery here, and, and now now Fed governors are debating amongst themselves what is good, what is bad, bad. All uncertainty from Fed officials in, in and of, of themselves. Uh, so, um, not, not, uh, and then I add this uh, star, star, star at the bottom. Uh, we had the London Olympics, uh, and great event for the city of London. Uh, really thoroughly enjoyed the games. But it came at a time where uh, we needed traders. We needed traders to move the market. Traders caused the market to move, move one way or the other. Those big traders. And those big traders were off and away because they didn't want to deal with commuting into London when really commuting was a difficult thing when people were all over the place. Maybe they even wanted to enjoy the London Olympics games. Games. So the summer was, I think, an unusual uh, summer as well uh, in, in that the London Olympics or the Olympics took place within one of the major financial capitals of the world in London. So all these things help contribute to the uncertain environment in the foreign exchange market, a market environment whereby um, a discernible trend couldn't be found. So we had the perfect storm, if you will, of uncertainty. And it, and it somewhat, instead of causing more volatility up and down, it sort of paralyzed the market instead for stretches on time. Much like uh, the storm that hit the New York metropolitan area did, um, the Sandy uh, storm, that um, it didn't seem like it would cause much problems, but it sure did cause problems. And you would think that all the, all you know, looking at the foreign exchange market, all the issues that we we're going to have going into the 2012 year would cause a, um, you know, almost a, a larger hurricane, if you will. But it didn't. It caused a smaller hurricane. So it was kind of a perfect storm in the opposite way uh, in relation to the storm that we had at, uh, in, in the New York metropolitan, Andy, uh, metropolitan area, area with Sandy. Uh, but uh, the effects were uh, equally, I guess, as surprising. Um, I would expect it more from this year. So although the year is not normal, the dynamics may continue uh, as we head into the new year, uh, what traders have to do in these types of environments is adjust, adjust their trading mindset to the new environment. You can't just sit there and um, trade it like, like um, it, you're used to. So in a market dominated by uncertainty, one of the things that I think that you as a trader have to realize is that your fundamental view becomes less important. It's not as important for, you, for what you think it might happen from a fundamental perspective. The reason is is because that fundamental perspective and the focus on the fundamental perspective changes. It changes almost day, day by day or week by week or 
nine days by nine days. It's always changing. We're always focus, focusing on one thing, and then we change the bias and we focus on another thing. So you see the market going up for nine days, and you see the market coming down for ten days, um, and you see it going up. And really, over the last uh, month or month or so, we've seen the market more on the on the uh, downward. Uh, trend, but even that fa found some support. We'll look at that a little bit later. Um, if you trade less, uh, if your trading is not in sync with the market, stop, stop and regroup. Remember to do this in uncertain environments because it's easy to get out of sync with the market. The market go uh, go up, it'll go down. If you're if you're when the market's moving up, if you're selling and the market's coming down, you're buying you're buying at the wrong level. Stop, regroup, try to get you back in sync with the market. Be really cognizant of the little trends that go on. Be wary of falling in love with your position. Instead of thinking, uh, think more in terms of falling in like with it. You want to date the buy side. You want to date the sell side. You don't want to marry either of them. You want to just like them. You know, like them for what, what they are. A fun time on a date. Maybe one's you know a little bit more exciting here, and the other one's a little more exciting there. Whatever it is, just fall in like with your position. Don't try to think in terms of falling in love with your position. Um, let the market tell you who you should date. Uh, it should it be the longs, should it be the shorts. But the market will tell you. We'll go through that in a little bit. Don't be afraid to take partial profits along the way or get out and start again. In a in a an uncertain environment where the market's moving up and it's moving down. Try to define those key technical levels where, where even if you take partial profit it's, uh, and the market continues in the direction of the trend, you still have your the little trend, the mini trend. It gives you more confidence in that position. You're, you're able to hold on to the position a little bit longer until the market tells you to go the other way and get totally out. Um, so think in terms of taking some partial profits along the way. You know, don't be so trend 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 longer term trend focus be a little bit more shorter term trend focus but at the same time you know if the market's going to give you something let it give you it let the market tell you when to get out be patient focus on getting getting better trade location with defined and limited risk be be patient look for failures the Aussie versus US dollar here today what do we do we went a little bit below the 100 day moving average and we went a little bit below the 100 hour moving average simple moving average just put them on your charts take a look at that um, what what you can uh, say from that is that there, those were little failures little failures in the market uh, uh, sometimes lead to reactionary reversals the other way so look be patient look for little failures you've got to be patient in your trading follow the visual technical cl true clues traders in uncertain times rely on key technical levels so we're going to talk about those technical clues at some point the market will trend the longer the market non trends a better chance for a trend there is more certainty so be aware and prepared I know it sounds like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth in 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 saying this, you know, saying take partial profit, you know, be sure sure to get out, re regroup. So, you know, this is an uncertain environment, blah blah blah. But eventually, this market's going to trend. Eventually, the market's going to move a little bit longer, farther, and longer than you think. And you have to make sure that you are um, you understand that that potential exists. And so, if the market um, comes to a key support level. Just think in your minds, the market comes to a key support level. I don't care what that support level is is in, in your minds right now, but if it comes to that key support level, and in the past you've been buyers against that level, buyers against that level, buyers against that level, so you're a buyer again at that level, and the market breaks through that level, don't fight it. Let it go. Get out of the position. Take your loss because this market can, has a potential to trend at some point. It may not be between now and the end of the year. It may be next week. It may be tomorrow. But you have to be aware that you know the market. You know that if the market gives you or starts to trend from a non-trending environment, don't necessarily get in the way. Let the market tell you what to do. Okay, we'll look at that in in a second. So visual technical clues, trues, clues are derived from the most technical tools. Um, that's one of my rules. Use tools that traders can all see. Think logically. Be with the crowd. Keep it simple and be sure you define your risk. That's what I mean by visual technical clues. The or clues. Um, you have to use technical tools that are that everyone can see that are logical, that are simple, and define risk. So let's take a look at some uh, charts and look at this year. Year in in. Um, that's a, a certain key key times. This was a a a time where the market 
was uncertain, really uncertain. It didn't know which way it wants to go. Um, this is more of a trending time. It knew what it wanted to do. It didn't know what it wanted to do here. It kind of knew, kind of knew, didn't know what it wanted to do. Overall, the market, as I mentioned, is kind of in the middle currently. This is a few days old, by the way, this chart, so don't be, don't be alarmed. We'll look at uh, more recent charts. Um, in a little bit, but uh, but I want to I want to focus on this area right here, and when you look at that area, you know, so you you have to want, you want to use just key simple tools, and the most basic simple tool that I know is is a trend line. So if you connect this high with this high right here, and you come to this point right here, this is a basic trend line. Draw it and see it. Logical resistance, simple defined risk at 1382. The market peaked on May 1st, right at that level. This was this was the high. This was the high. It looks like the high extended here, but this is actually the dotted line right there. It came right on that dotted line. So so this 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 was a trend line where the 1382 was a high, and from that point point sellers could define risk against that level. It was a level where tra traders could come in the market. It was a level that people could could see, and even if the if they sold the market at this point right here, when the market was below these lows right here, this risk is defined right up here. It's very simple to see. What's so hard about that? It's not. It's not. That's what you have to do in these not in non-trending environments where the market's moving up and down. Just take what the market gives you. See what it says. Now I'm going to put another chart up here, and this time uh, um, um, I'm not going to show. You know, here we see it's a euro. It's a daily chart. Markings. You can see that high. The market goes a thousand pips to the downside. Everything visual there. Now let's take a look at this chart. And this this chart is a little different. It has a um, upward sloping uh, trend line as opposed to the downward sloping that we saw in the previous chart. We don't know what the chart is here. It took the price out, put the dates out, took the contract out here. But what we can see is that um, just the same simple trend lines here. In an, in, a, in an environment where there's uncertainty, use these simple visual tools because traders are looking for them. Traders are looking for ideas to trade against where they can define risk, where they can limit risk, where they can know where they're right and where they're wrong. And so if you just connect one, two, three points, just like we did on the other chart, um, this is basic. You can draw it and see it. You can see it's log logical. It holds resistance up there. It's logical res resistance. It's simple, and it defines risk. If you trade it against this level, you define risk against that level. Level is defined by the trend line, and the market holds that level, and so if the market comes down to this point right here, you can still sell the market. Why? Because you have this to backstop against it. It's very visual. You can see it. it's all there. It's logical. When the market breaks through the low right here, which has even more lines along it or tests along that trend line, you can count them right there. Uh, when the market breaks through here, and we see this big bar. This big bar is a clue here, too. Do we see any of those any bars in the past that look like this? No. This market is telling telling you something it's telling you it's breaking and that break continues down here so what what is this chart this is a euro versus us dollar and this is may 1st this is the same day that the daily chart was reaching its peak was reaching its resistance level and so the point here folks is that if you have like an hourly if you have an hourly chart and you have a daily chart and both of them match up at with a high at the same resistance level that's a clue. That's how you have to trade these uncertain environments, by putting together certain clues from maybe multiple charts along the way. And when the market breaks to the support level, it goes down, and, and it's, it's a, a simple move. So here's our two charts. This is our daily chart. Uh, remember, the trend line was going to the downside, but we were peaking right here at this 132.82 level, I guess it was, was right here on the uh, trend line. Very clear to see. At the same time, the hourly chart was peaking against its little trend line here. This is the, the four-day, you know, four-day highs. Highs one, two, well, three-day high. We didn't reach the high high here, but we have a four-day period where you connect the highs, and the market finds its resistance against it. Use it. Use it. Use these visual, simple tools to allow you to trade these uncertain markets. In the recent market environment in the last few months, uh, the market has been characterized by uncertainty similar to that that we saw in the February, March, and April uh, period. This makes uh, someone like me, who is the uh, author of what is called a, a book called Attacking Currency Trends, subtitled How to Anticipate and Trade Big Moves in the Forex Market, a little bit uneasy, doesn't it? We have to cross out the big and instead think in terms of not longer term trends or, or the big moves as outlined you know, by the subtitle. You know, the dynamics are still the same. 
the moves are what we'd be more interested in. The moves in the foreign exchange market, the moves against that 132.82 level or whatever level it was on the hourly chart, on the daily chart. That's what you have to be focused on. You have to be focused on the little moves, the little trends. You can still attack the currency trends. They're just smaller trends. So be aware of that. Be prepared. So let's take a look at this uh, uh, market that we've seen um, of late. Uh, you know, and in, in this uh, box right here, well, how would you characterize this market? Is this market trending or is this market non-trending? And I think you, you would, most people, most people um, uh, that I, I would speak to, uh, look at this, would say that this market is non-trending. The market doesn't have a discernible trend. So how do you trade this type of market in a certain environment? Well, the first thing that you should recognize is that even in a non-trending market, you can still have trends. They might be smaller trends, but they are still trends. This is a trend to the upside. This is a trend to the downside. Trend to the upside. Downside. Trend to the upside. Downside. Trend to the upside. Trend to the downside. They are still trends. There are also tools, technical tools, that you can apply to these charts that help give traders clues for the profitable trades, even in these uncertain times. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make the judgment that there are probably tools that will show you the way in these uncertain times. Why? Because traders traders want to define their risk. Traders want to limit the risk, especially, especially during uncertain times. Times where where market direction is not known. Think about it. Get it change your mind to think like the smartest traders out there, the traders who want to define the risk. So we already know that trend lines are an important, important, important tool. I, I just use them in a simple way to illustrate the point. It doesn't have to be difficult. It just has to be visual in an uncertain market. When the market's not trending like it did in March, February, March, and April, apply a trend line every once in a while. Define your risk against those trend lines. And you'll be surprised. Maybe you'll be find a thousand pips along the way or at least get in a good trade location to participate in part of that. Um, so um, we'll talk about that Forex scale. Uh, and uh, so trend lines and moving averages. I like to use 100 and 200 uh, simple moving average. So let's take a look at our daily daily chart. Uh, this is the up and down action that we had. And I put a 200-day moving average. Now, people who know me know that the 200-day moving average is one of my gigs, one of my things, one of my, um, one of my tools that I use. I also use the 100 simple moving average. Um, that's the blue line. So the green line is a 200, a 200 simple moving average. By the way, if your moving average looks different than mine, Go to your broker and ask why you have a closing price for Sunday, okay? Because there's only five trading days in the foreign exchange market that most of the traders, institutional traders, uh, data data providers, you know, even in the foreign, in this in the spot market, there's only five settlement days per week. There's not a six settlement day. So if you have a Sunday close. That's screwing up your moving averages, okay? That's screwing up your your 200-day moving average. So I often get people saying, I have these types of charts, and your moving average doesn't look like my moving average. You're trading off the wrong moving average, folks, all right? If you go to Bloomberg, if you go to CNBC, if you if they put up a euro dollar with a 200-day moving average, you're going to see a 200-day moving average that has five trading days, not six. So uh, just go back, uh, put your cursor on uh, days, and uh, look uh, you know look back to see if there's a a day close for Sunday. Uh, if there is, it's not right, okay? So just telling you that. The market won't. It's what the market trades rather than what, you know, your broker is open for, okay? Just to give you, give you a little clue. But anyway, this is a 200 simple moving average that you'll see on Bloomberg, that you'll see on Reuters, that you'll see on CNBC, um, that you see at FXDD as well. But um, um, the 200-day moving average here, um, what happened here when the market broke above the 200-day moving average? The market moved higher. Market moved above it, closed above it, found support against this level, and moved higher. And you can see that uh, there, there was other times here, uh, here um, uh, when it broke, broke, it moved, it moved uh, absolutely higher. Now let's, um, so now let's take a look at this break uh, from a historical perspective and and see if this level is significant or what you, if you think it's significant. And what we see here is the market trending to the downside here, and this break came in around the 128. Uh, actually, I think it was like 20, 20, uh, it might have been 33 at this point. Down here, it's like 23. 
23 and 22. So 30, 33, let's just call it 33, but wherever it breaks, it breaks. That's a 200 bar moving average. And, the, and this is the first break of the 200 day moving average since October 28, 2011. So for the entire year, the market um, stayed below the 200 day moving average. So is that significant? Yes. Now let's put in uh, another simple moving average. And you see this, sim this moving average or this trend line here? Does this look familiar? Yes. This is the, the, the same trend line that caused the started the move to the downside in May. Move forward. And it comes back into play right here. The market comes, uh, that trend line comes in about 10 pips above that level. Um, is that significant? Is the break above that trend line significant? Break above the 200 bar moving average significant? Yes. Visual, simple, look at it. So what does it define risk against these levels? Well, if the market should break above the 33 level and break above the 43 level here, the divine risk is, you know, I don't know. How about that? 28.10. So does it, does it, do you have to risk a lot on these trades when you see something visual, something, uh, something that's uh, significant? No. In an uncertain environment, take the clues from the market and let's see where it goes. Let's see where it goes. goes. And if it takes you out, all right, let it take you out. You lost. That's part of trading. Not all these things work, okay? Um, not all the time the market is going to do what you think it should do. In fact, over here it doesn't do what it think it should do. We don't find support here. It breaks actually below that line right here. We'll get to that in a second. So if, um, now, um, one of the things that you have to do as a trader is, is you have your entry, but you have to then have targets of where you're going. And so I'm going to introduce a third tool here. A third tool that traders tend to use, which is visual, simple, logical, defines risk, is a Fibonacci retracement. So if I go back, here's, here's our, our levels that we just traded in in this uncertain environment where the market doesn't know which way it wants to go, go or, or it's, it's, it's starting to trade in an uncertain environment at this point right here. Here, um, what, what I want to know is where are we going? So if you take the high and the low here, and, and you do your due diligence in your, in your trading, again, use tools that the market's going to follow and stuff. And if you take this high and the low here, and uh, you apply a Fibonacci retracement, you can help to def start to define targets of where you're going, especially in, you know, corrective moves. And this would be, this is a trend, and this would be a corrective move. And these targets help define areas where you to take profit or even go the other way in uncertain markets. So if I were to apply a Fibonacci from that high to this low right here, you can see that the 38.2% retracement comes in at the 131.48 level. So when the market broke through this 200 bar moving average and the, and the trend line here, the market had us, we had our stop down here, and the market started its rally. And it wasn't but three or so day, days later where the market moved from this 128.33 level to 131.67, right around the 131.48 level. Now, we went above the 48 level, yes. The market should have gone higher above the 48 level because it broke through the 48 level. If I move this chart way over to the right and saw the market breaking through the 48 level, what would I be thinking? I would be thinking this market's going higher, but it didn't. It, it's failed up there. Remember one of the things that you look for in in markets that are uncertain, perhaps you know, with lots of lots of uh, uh, potential for um, news to change, change um, is for failures. And this market uh, had a close or, or moved above that 48 level, failed, or, or didn't close above that level. And the next day we moved above it again and didn't close above it. And the market started to move to the move to the downside from that part. Clue, clue. Look for the clues. Look for the fit, little failures. Even a little failure is just that much. That's clue, clue to the downside. Now, when the, when the market came down here to the bottom here, we found support against what? The 200-day moving average. And the market moved up a little bit and then came down. And you actually um, uh, moved down a little bit below that line. It, did, it actually moved about 19 pips below the line, just like it moved 19 pips above the line here. here. And the market came down to the 03 level and failed again. And what did that failure cause? It caused the market to move back and forth, up, up, and uh, down, down. And so... Um, uh, there are certain things that I'm going to go through now that, that you want to look for in an uncertain environment. Little clues along the way, little technical clues that you can use, little, little tools that you can use that will help define the trend. And if, the, and if you see these things start to hold, if you see, see um, little, the clues um, come to fruition, 
from technical from the technical levels start to believe them start to think that you're not the only one that is seeing it okay so let's take a look at failures okay T uh, failures of key technical levels in uncertain markets can provide reversal clues so we looked at this high right here this is a, a you know this is bringing it in closer here the 48 level um, the market moved through that 48 level and failed up there and then the market started to come down failures failures are clues when the market came down to the 200 we found support against the 200 we found support against the 200 each of these times the market bounced the market bounced we're trying to find find support with market bounce and then the market fell through the level so if you bought here and the market moved higher you had some profit in the, in the trade but eventually um, if, if you're just using this 200 bar moving average, you'd stop yourself out below the 03 or the 23 level. That's where the level came in. And the market went down to 03 level, but closed back above it. Look for those failures, just like you look up here. And when you see the market start to move higher, that's an opportunity to get back in the market. Get back in the market, see the market, um, see the failure. Understand that failures are important in uncertain environments because the Bias changes very really quickly. Bias changes. So look for failures in uncertain markets, and especially at key technical levels. 38.2, key technical level. 200-day moving average, key technical level. These are levels that you have to pay attention to. Now, over here, when we had the election, election occur, and the market um, failed uh, uh, to stay below the 200 day moving average on this day we came and tested the 200 day then we moved below then we had the election and the election results came out what were the, 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 the response to the election sell the dollar so the euro went up and where did we go we went up to the underside of this trend line actually and the market failed the market failed above that 200 day moving average and that started to move to the downside we're up here now now I know uh, I know we're, we're higher off of this level but the, uh, and in fact we went a little bit lower here we went down toward the 61 level here but the uh, the, the uh, point is look for failures look for Failures. On the election day, when the market failed up here, it actually started the uh, and we started to move back below the 23 level. It actually started to move sharply to the downside. Other things uh, traders look for using your key technical tools: 38.2 percent retracement. 38.2 percent retracement slowed the move up here. It slowed the move up here. Here we got to 43. Here the market found sellers, early sellers against the 48 level. Market sold off. That's a key level. Um, look. Not oftentimes, uh, look for key uh, technical levels that, you know, maybe head and shoulders formations, maybe things like gaps, okay? Little uh, uh, technical clues that don't come along very often, but when they do, you have to pay attention to them. And there was a gap back in May when the market peaked at the 82 level, 130, whatever, 132, 82 level, started to move to the downside here. We actually had a gap, a gap in the market here that, took, that was in between, uh, what was the 79 level and the 65 level. Market remembers that, folks. Market remembers that gap. Believe me, it knows that gap exists. In fact, I had a trader tell me at the Las Vegas Traders Expo that he went long right here because he thought that gap is going to be filled and he saw the market starting to move up here he went long and he lost and lost and lost finally got stopped out of his position and he told me he's like I couldn't tell my wife I couldn't tell my wife I couldn't tell my wife what uh, uh, what I what I did uh, and he got lucky he came down to the 50 percent of the euros trading range at the 121.31 level this is what he's uh, relaying to me and he said he bought at right here against that 31 level against that 121.31 level, and he was able to make back, to the grace of God, um, most of what he lost, so then he could have a happy marriage again, and didn't, didn't have to, so uh, anyway, uh, the point is, um, the gaps do matter, the gaps are remembered, the gaps are remembered, and that gap was remembered here when the market broke through that gap, and we started to shoot back to the upside, it also remem was remembered here, it was remembered here, it was remembered here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. I don't think it's an accident that the market that the market market moved above the gap, came down to the gap, found support, and when it broke through the gap here, came back and used the gap as resistance to sell down here. I, do, I just don't think that that's a coincidence. I think the market remembered that level, remembered that key level. 
I was saying to him, I don't think the market, that it was a coincidence that the market came up to this level right here, the bottom side of the gap, and we had saw traders against that level right here because they can define risk against that level, and they knew that that gap existed, and the market went up to that level and found, came down and found support against the 200. And I don't think the market, uh, it was a coincidence the market uh, stopped, and this was a strong move to the upside at this level, regrouped, and then broke to this level and broke back up to the highs to our 48 level, and uh, but but I don't think this has happened by coincidence. I think the market knew that that level was in existence. And, and by the same token, when the market started to come back down after failing at the 48 level, and we came down to the gap, where do we close? Right at the gap. In the next three days, we used the gap as resistance, resistance, resistance. And we couldn't get above that gap, and the market sold off from that level. Take these little clues, folks. These little clues think from gaps, from from... Even from gap, you know, from gaps, some things that are just unusual. Use them, and, and if the market, if you see something, a, a pattern develop, believe in it, okay? Especially at key levels. Uh, we had one trend line uh, that you can apply to this uh, daily chart. One, two, three different points when the market broke to that level. Boom. Um, uh, it uh, moved up, but I'm talking about the moving average here. The num moving average uh, tested a number of different times, one, two, three, four, five different times. Uh, when we broke through the moving average here, the market moved lower. When we failed on the break above the moving average here, the market moved lower from there. And then finally, this trend line, which I got a little ahead of, ahead of myself. This trend line, one, two, three different points along that trend line. When the market broke through the trend line, we stay below the trend line. When the market corrected it on the Obama uh, election results, the market stayed below the underside of the trend line. Look for the market to use trend lines, especially when they're defined by uh, more than two points on a line in an uncertain environment, to, um, to use those uh, trend lines as, um, as levels to lean against. In an uncertain environment, you've got to use these technical tools. So overall, in our uncertain environment that, uh, that accompanied the market for these two-month periods, you could have gotten away with just using a 38.2% retracement, a gap, a 200-bar moving average, and a trend line. And you would have uh, you would have been able to uh, trade this like um, uh, like a pro, you know, in double top, you know, throwing a double top there, there. Uh, but um, be patient, wait for those levels, uh, see the key levels. Doesn't mean that you're not going to do trades in between here, 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 and here, and here. And maybe you're not a day trader or something like that. We'll talk about that in just a second here. But what you have to do is is see the big picture, okay? See. You know, see if you can grasp on to something that the market is grasping on to. Because the market is un uncertain as you are in this environment. It doesn't know what it wants to do. Here's a move down to the 62 low. It doesn't know what it wants to do. It wants to use levels like here, like here, like here. Use a 200-hour day moving average. Use a 100-day 100, 100 moving average. Got within 19 pips of the 100-day moving average on the bottom side. You know, maybe that's enough on the first test of the 100-day moving average. Maybe that was a, enough to get your interest in, or it certainly was enough to get the interest of the market here. That's what you got to lose. So um, now you may be asking, oh, but Greg, I'm not this longer-term trader who likes to take positions over days like you've just described here. Could I trade the market as effectively intraday using the same tools, using the same methodology that you just applied, the simple visual methodology? And my answer to that is why not? Tools are tools. Traders, whether they're longer-term or short-term, have the desire to define the risk. So why not? So let's take a look at this and, and apply simple technical tools along the way. Now this is our trend move to the upside. Let's put in trend line, okay? Let's connect one to uh, two, different, uh, two different points along the trend line. And let's just put in a top side trend line here that connects these, you know, that, that so, just so happens once this trend line is established, you can put in a, a parallel trend line. And lo and behold, the market finds resistance against that level. So now, we, now we've defined, by this point right here, we've defined a trend. We have a trend channel. And the market goes up, and it goes up, and we test that trend line. It comes down, it tests it here, and then we accelerate the trend line to the upside, and we go, go through it. Through it. You know, th this should be a move to the upside, and we try to stay above, and we don't. We start to move down. Where do we come? We go back to our bottom trend line, and we break. So, so that trend line, trend lines do work, folks. I know people don't like trend lines because they're too simple. Oh, gosh. Oh, boy. They worked here. Um, add 100 and 200 bar moving average, okay? Add 100 bar, 200 bar moving average. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, maybe, maybe, yeah. Oh, maybe it has some, some relevance. 
Um, uh, th now, we, now we throw in our lines from our daily chart, okay? It's not enough for you just to trade the hourly chart if you're an intraday trader or a swing trader or something like that. And by the way, you can use shorter term charts to do the same thing, okay? So chart to chart, chart to chart. But what, uh, what I want you to do is um, if, you're, if you're looking at the hourly chart, it's important that you know that the 38.2% retracement exists on the daily chart, okay? It's important that you know that level exists at the 131.48. This is, this is put... This is at the wrong spot. I thought that was an 8. This really should be up a, just a touch up around the 48 level. That's where the level comes in. Um, know, that, know where the gap is. Put horizontal lines on that gap. You may be able to see things a little bit more clearer in this area here, right? You know that gap existed. Look, remember when I was saying, oh, when the market broke through the gap, what did it do? Look what it did on the hourly chart. It went up and it came down and it tested the gap here. We couldn't see that on a daily chart, but we can see it clearly here, and then moved higher. And then we tested the gap here, and we moved higher. You get to see it more clearly in here. And when the market came down to the gap, what did it do? It held the gap here, and then it broke below the gap, and then we started to test this. And poor, one poor soul bought it one pip above the gap here at 79, paid 80, and that was it. The market started to move to the down, downside. So that's what hap that's what happened. Uh, that's what happened. Uh, that's what you can see in these charts. You can see the support on the trend lines. You can see everything. So these lines come in the 38.2. These lines. Draw those ch lines in your hourly chart because you know that they're important. This 128.23. This was the uh, this was the uh, moving average at this point. This point when the market started to come down. We started at 33. It was down at 23 when the market came down to this this level right here. So here's our here's our 200 day moving average. Here's our 200-day moving average. See what happens. See what happened. And the market bounced off the 200-day moving average. What do we do? We went above the hunt. This was a clue here, a clue here for your, your trading. To go long, the market moved above the 100, and we stayed above the 100. We went to the 200, and we couldn't get above that level. So is it, is it time to take profit up here? Can you define your risk against that level? Yeah. And the market moves down, and we spend six hours trying to stay below the 200-day moving average. It's right here when the market fell below this level. We spent six or seven hours right below this line right here, and it bounced against it. It bounced against it. It bounced against it. Are you surprised when the market moved above the 23 level right here that it, that it took off? No, you can start to see the trees of the forest here, both in your long-term charts and in your hourly charts. So you can trade these markets, markets by looking at the same tools, the same key levels, and get better, better understanding the market by maybe looking at the 100 and 200 hour moving average as well. These two moving averages converge, and what does the market do? It has a decision to make. We can't get any more confined than here where the two moving averages converge and the market takes off. And where do we go? We go to our gap. Now let's continue. Uh, uh, continue. Here's, um, here's, a, here's that trend. Here, here's the downside move. I, I, I kind of got ahead of myself. So this is the upside move. The market breaks through the trend line and starts to go down. Now let's look at this move right here. And we know, we know, we know the 200-day uh, moving average down here. We know the 100-bar moving average is here. But we also can draw a trend line here. We can connect this point to this point right here and this point right here and, cre and create a trend line. We can draw a parallel trend line here here that uh, comes down and finds support against this level. We can draw the, we know that the 100 bar moving average is here. We know the trend line and, and now the 50%, we put a Fibonacci here from here to here. Where does the market stop right here? 38.2% retracement. Ah, oh, from this point right here, we broke through the 200. 200. We should go lower, but we find support against the 38.2. Can't go lower. It starts to move higher. Where do we go? The 100 bar moving average. Where do we go? Down below the 38.2, but find support against the trend line. Where do we find resistance? 100 bar moving average. Where do we go? 50% retracement level. Stops right on the nose there. Market starts to correct. Go, goes back a little bit below this level, a little bit below the 23 level. Or, or we're, we're, we're supported here by the 23 level, the 200 day moving average. And where do we go? We go right to the 200 bar moving average after getting above the 100 bar moving average. Average. And after getting back above the 38.2% retracement line, and then the market starts its move back to the downside. You see the clues here. The clues in the market in this uncertain environment become more clearer when you start to use technical tools that the market will follow and if the, or, or tend to follow. And if you start to see the 100-hour 100, 100 moving average hold up here, expect to see it hold here or at least put a fight up right here. And you can start to, start to trade these uncertain markets with a little bit more certainty. 
If you know the 50% retracement level is there and it holds and moves up and it comes back down again to this level, and we have the 23 level and the 50% and the retracement, you see this level hold. The 128.23, the 200 day moving average, you see this level hold. Take it for what it's worth. Now we have the daily chart, the 50% retracement on the hourly chart, and the, and, the, and the old low holding here. All these things add up to being in a trade. I forget where we are. We're right here now. Uh, so now the market starts to move up. Can you draw a trend line? Yeah, you can draw a trend line to the upside. Can you draw a parallel trend line? Yeah, you can draw a parallel trend line. And, and does this look very similar to this? this? This move to the upside? Go here. Draw a trend line, put a parallel trend line, uh, uh, you know, extend to the upside. Yeah, kind of. You know, I got to check the date to make sure it's not the same. Yeah, going the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. Where am I? Going the wrong way. Come on, stop being a fool. There we go. Fifty percent. Okay, this is a move down. Um, yeah, the mar market uh, September uh, starts to move higher. We we move above this trend line. We come down to the 50% retracement. Come down to the, the 23 level. This was our break below the 03 level. Now we start to move up. We can draw a trend line. Put the two moving averages together. Come up. When the market starts to come down, we come to the 50% retracement of this move to the upside. Find support. Come come back down. Start to move below the 200. Start to come to the 23 level. Bounce off the 23 level. See the two moving averages come together. Move sideways around and and. and and then break off to the upside. It's all very logical. If you if you draw a trend line on this downward move, uh, move this is uh, this is this move to the downside right here. Same chart, same chart. I'm drawing trend lines here. Trend line, trend line. Hold the trend line. Trend line, trend line. A little bit move below here. Hold the 23 level. Start to move higher. Again, we're only working off of moving averages. We're mo working off of trend lines. We're mar working off of Fibonacci retracements of this move to the downside. Where does the market hold 50% retracement of this leg? This is a trend move to the downside. Where do we come? 50% trend line. Use these levels. You see this? See this move to the downside? Trend move to the downside. Market breaks below the 100 bar moving average. Moves above the 100 bar moving average. Comes up to this point right here. What's this point represent? 38.2% retracement of this move to the downside. This move to the downside was helped by the breaking of this trend line. I don't want to get confusing in what, what you're looking at here because it does seem like there's a, a lot going on here. But if you but but if you start to break things down and draw a little trend line here and see this trend line hold and hold and hold, this is a level to sell, folks. This is this is our gap level up at the top. This is a parallel trend line off of this low right here. These are get, get clues that come in together at one point right here that say sell up here, that say sell here, that say sell here, that say say uh, 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 when when you find support here buy buy when we come up to the 38.2 and it holds and this is a parallel trend line here say sell here when it goes below the 100 bar moving average it says sell when it stays below the 100 bar moving average it comes down to the trend line and below this level level and then fails below here fails to get here it says buy right here when it market breaks back below the 200 bar moving average it says sell and it gets to this trend line we find some support and it gets a little sloppy here I must admit I must admit but we're heading down toward our 23 level here and the market comes down to the 34 level Level. We know the 23 level exists, and the market bounces back. And where do we, where do we come up to? The trend line and the 50% retracement of this. It says sell. It says sell here and buy above it. Put your stop above the 200. That's what you got to do. Got to see. You got to start to see little little things along the way. I want to take a look at the um, uh, the current market uh, uh, now. Uh, assume you, that you see uh, the euro dollar dollar chart. Um, do you see the euro dollar chart on the screen, the daily chart? Can someone just say yes? Yes, good, thank you. All right. Um, 
we uh, let, you know, let's look at the daily chart here, where we stand right now, and, and what the market is saying in this uncertain environment that we're in. Okay, the market market for the month of uh, no, November. Oops, uh, for the um, get out of here. Okay, for the month of a uh, month month of uh, November that we've seen, we've seen the market uh, actually trend. To the downside, we were able to break below the 200-day moving average, break below and and uh, come down. Where do we come down to? To initially, this 50% retracement. What is this of? This is of the 2012 trading range. 50% retracement, 2012. 50% of the 2012 trading range. If we are playing um, tug of war, and the year is 2012, and we had the bulls on this side. And the bears on this side, uh, and we had the the the, uh, the you know the white flag in the middle. So bulls are on this side and bears are on this side. And we're pulling back and forth. This would be where the where the, the the dividing line. This is where in a tug of war, the market is neutral. And the 127.63 level is that midpoint. It's that midpoint where the flag is just on the bullish and bearish side. When it goes below it, it turns bearish. When it goes above it, it's bullish. And so what do we do? We broke through it below the 200 bar moving average. We came to the 50% the of the year's trading range on election day. On election day. And the market... Um, uh, the the the, uh, the way the market was going to go if Obama got elected the dollar would get sold off so the dollar got sold off the market moved above the 200 day moving average on election night or on the next next day in the uh, Asian session moved above came back to our underside of our trend line and, and all of a sudden traders start to realize that well if I can just define risk against this level um, and the market doesn't go above that level and comes back below the 200 day moving average. We still have an uncertain market environment here, so uh, just because the election is over, it doesn't mean that the uncertainty doesn't exi exist. It just says that Obama is you know, still president and we still have all the problems that we have in the United States and problems in Europe and all that other stuff. So when the market couldn't, from a technical perspective, get it back above this level, what did the traders do? They said, sell! They said, I'll sell against this level with a stop above it. I assume that's what they said, or the people who sold near the highs here said, we just broke this trend line. We've got to get above that trend line in the market. Instead of Obama wins and the market goes flying to the upside, the market went orderly to the upside. It went higher, but it went orderly to the upside. And when things go orderly to the upside and don't gap to the upside like uh, maybe people are thinking, they can start to look at levels and understand levels and say, well, uh, you know, I'll sell against that level. And the, and the <coughs> excuse me, that's what a drink does. It makes you cough. And the market started to move back below 200, uh, 200 uh, uh, day moving average. And it was started to go down. And where did we go down to? We went down to uh, near um, an intersection here. We have trend line coming down. Guess what uh, trend line this is? This is the uh, same uh, February, March, April, May trend line that we broke above here. Um, it's coming down here, right here. This is where it intersects with the 100-day moving average. And that 100-day moving average and the trend line intersected at this point, which, which may have contributed to early buyers here around the 59, 60 level in the euro. The market found some support levels, support buyers against this level, um, and the market since moved up. Now, where do we stand? Where do we go up to? We went up to the 200-day moving average. And then the market came down, and where we come down to? The 126.99 level, that level, level, um, that level is this old high. This is one of those remembered lines, okay? It's an interim le level. It's not all that important as a support level, except it was a support level when the market was coming down. When we broke through that midpoint right there, it came down to the 91 level. It, be it became an a even more impo important support level because it, it held here. It held here. It held here. We broke down. We got close to the 100-day moving average, and then... What do we do? We hold it again here. So we come up to the 200. We come back down here. 
Is this level important? Draw a line there. They're 91 level now, folks, okay? I'll draw a line, trend line coming up here. That's important. Important. Uh, by the way, it's along the trend line as well. Um, that's important as well. And this 100 bar moving average is here in this point right here. So if, if market's going to go down from here, we have to get through the 63 level. By the way, we held the 63 level here today after testing the 200 yesterday and clo actually closed a little bit above it. We, we came down on what? At 505 on France, France's uh, uh, downgrade. Market came down to the 63 level. Here's the hourly chart. Here's our 63 level. Here's a five minute chart. Here's our 63 level. Market came down to the 63 level and stopped. It stopped at the midpoint of the year. Why? I don't know. So the market moved up, and now we're above the 200-day moving average. Guess what, folks? In an uncertain environment, what are you supposed to do above the 200-day moving average? It closed above the 200-day moving average here. We're supposed to think in terms of buying. We're supposed to think in terms of this market has the potential to move higher from here. That'll do it, folks. Um, I'm out of breath, um, and um, sorry if I didn't get any to any, to any questions, uh, but we're out of time here. But I just wanted to illustrate here, fo folks, um, a, uh, a uh, thing, thing here, an important, um, important point. The most important point in an uncertain environment is to try to find these big levels. Try to find levels that really are meaningful. Now, in reality, I don't know if the market's going to close above the 12804 level here here today, which is which is where the 200-day uh, moving average comes in. In I don't know if it's going to close above that level, but what I do know is that that level is important. That level is important to the market. It should be important to you. And I don't want you to be, you know, if you buy here at 15 and, and get stopped out when the market goes below uh, 128. That's just the risk of trading, okay? That's the risk of trading in this uncertain environment. But, um, and I'm not telling you to buy buy here or whatever. I would have told you to buy early, earlier today or potentially uh, buy earlier today uh, when there are other clues in the market, uh, maybe from the hourly or from the uh, five-minute chart. But what you have to do as a trader is be sure to understand these key levels, key levels, and see if the market follows through, see if the market really pays attention to it and starts to move. And if it does, you're off, you're off and away. My name is Greg Michalowski. I'm the Chief Currency Analyst for FXDD. Thank you to the people at FX Street. Thank you for you for coming in here today. Uh, talk to you next month. Bye-bye now. And happy Thanksgiving to those and happy uh, Christmas and uh, Hanukkah to those people if I don't get to talk to you next month. Bye-bye now.